let me tell you the original apostolic formula if you find a pastor that begins to practice immorality perpetually are you with me if that pastor doesn't submit to the authority of other members in the body of Christ for them to administer discipline to him and eventually restore him back to ministry when they have seen that the infirmities that bedeviled him have been dealt with by the grace of God. Because our generation no longer knows restoration into ministry. He believes he can just snap back and say, Hallelujah! And then he continues back on the pulpit. You know what he will be doing? Everybody that attends to his ministry becomes inflicted by his error. He is ministering the same spirit that has kept him in perpetual bondage and has produced a narrative in his life that is contrary to what grace was sent to accomplish. And because in our time, we no longer have the needed humility that is needed for us to be restored. We see ministers of the gospel that have dwelt in immorality. They dwelt in it. They believe they can just snap back to the pulpit and claim that that thing is irrelevant. It is, it, it is an indication of the fact that such people have not discerned the body of Christ adequately. Because it is the responsibility of spiritual people in the body of Christ to put that person on that discipline until they can prayerfully do away with the administration of death that is working in him and eventually through their stature in the body restore him back into ministry. So a lot of people are trying to escape those gates of life. And they think that the fact that you, still, you are still holding a microphone, that you are still doing ministry. You know, the Bible says that the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. And what grace teaches? It teaches that we should deny ungodly laws. Huh? If you begin to follow Jesus Christ, the appetite that you have for fornication, if you keep pressing, it will dry up. One day you will just realize that urge is no longer there. And even if the urge comes, you have this grace to be able to withstand it. No longer controls you. Even though sin is still in your body, but sin doesn't have the ability, the handle to control you, it's no longer available. And that's how we begin to walk from victory to victory. As we begin to engage the grace of God, it is becomes evident that you are a new creation. That it was not the old you that is alive here. Because the old you would have been involved in this, involved in that. But there is a power that is inside of you, which is called the grace of God, that makes you live above the power of sin. The purpose of grace is to produce victorious people that are not living under the influence and the power of sin, not living under the power of Satan, not living under the power of the world, not living under the power of self, not living under the influence of the spirit of the age. And grace is God's answer to all of these possibilities that Satan makes available and the products that Satan advertises. Grace is the answer. We have lived as a church, as a body of Christ in this nation. We have lived in an all-time low Christianity. Meanwhile, Jesus made provision in his grace to ensure that we are not left comfortless. People are accepting abnormal Christianity as normal. People are accepting abnormal pastors as pastors because the standards are falling and provision was made for us to be champions in the areas of our calling. But somehow we have been hindered and the grace of God has not been able to fulfill his full scope of errand in our lives and destinies because of the workings and the machinations of the Antichrist. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1. He said, Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have for forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, neither faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, 
and scourged every son that he received. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are what? I'm not the one that used the word, though. it's the Bible. A pastor is a man without discipline. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to do what? To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There are two sides to it. There is, there is a justice side to it and there is a forgiveness side which is based on the finished works of Jesus. The forgiveness side blots out the sin. Erases it from the register. The justice side ensures that you are dealt to it so that you will not repeat that sin again. Are you with me? So those dealings are dealings that will come upon us because of our tendency to sin. David went and took another man's wife. The child that came by that wife, that act of adultery, died. Are you, are you there? Because of that act of adultery, for a season, he was cast out of his palace. He went in dry places. A son began to masquerade as though he would take over power while his father was still alive. All of those dealings took place. And when his throne was restored, in old age, he was cold and they brought a virgin to warm him. He did not touch the virgin. Because when he was dealt with, because, because of that adultery, it insulated him from that kind of tendency. Are you, are you following? He will not only, oh my God, oh my God. He will not only forgive you from, for your sins, he will also look for how to cleanse you, purge you from that level of unrighteousness. So that given the same circumstances, you will not behave the same way. So this is the role of chastening, of chastisement. God will allow his choice, precious believers, to go through some hard circumstances. There are judgments that are calculated, designed from heaven, to bring you to a point where the tendencies that will derail you will be purged of you. Those of you that do anger, you do so much of anger. It will allow you to use something and strike someone. The person will faint and they will diagnose him dead. Then they will read out what will happen to you if they confirm this man dead. You yourself will begin to pray and vow that God, if the man should rise, that anger dies. <laughs> oh! Such is the way of your God. And if any man is lacking in chastisement, he is a bastard. Because that is an inheritance for all of God's children. Today, if you go to a preacher and you begin to explain a downtime to him, he says, yeah, it's lack of faith, lack of faith. You're, you are a victim of lack of faith. We don't understand the workings of the government of God when God purges a man. So that he will not be a slave to the things that Satan has used to anchor on his soul. There are circumstances he will pass you through so that that product of the devil will have no attraction to your soul. How many of you know a remote control? An LG remote control cannot operate a Samsung television. But the moment you find Samsung, you can change the channel. Satan doesn't know what, which of his products is interesting to you. So he will test many. He will test fat women. They will come and pass close to you. Hallelujah. Then he will test you with slim ones. When the fat one passed, you didn't notice. You were busy. The slim one passed. Then the ones that are short, now that they passed. And he captured your attention. Ah, this product. It is through that product he will change your channel. Yesterday you were burning for God. 
and your channel changed, it is a product. He found that if God wants to help you, he will take you through chastening and fire. Terrible situation that will purge that appetite and slim it out. And even if they bring short ones and pass in front of you, you will sing my Redeemer liver. If you come today as an open book ready for the touch of Jesus, it will enlarge your school. You know my story? I was a chronic liar. Chronic. An intelligent liar. Yes. At the age of 12, I sent my father to modern market as April Fool. My wife's father that did PhD. I sent him to the market. Because when he got there and came back, he didn't see the things I said. He says it's April Fool. He nearly, <laughs> he nearly dealt with me. But I had already done what I had in mind. In those days, because I was one of the youngest, if, they, if you are angry, they will slap you. If the elder ones are angry, they will still slap you. So we had to find ways of survival. One of such ways in the flesh was lying. I became a master. I'm talking about the lies that it will, it's only in eternity they will find out that this thing was a lie. It's well covered, well handled. And I was growing in it. And if you are growing in, in those things like that, it means the spirit is involved helping you. So at that point, I needed deliverance. But because if I'm under any small pressure, the trigger will come out. The spirit was involved. It's just like you can start fornication casually. You do it every Friday night. Friday night. You pray about it. You execute on Friday. A time will come. If you want to stop, you can't stop again. Because the spirit is involved. Have you ever seen somebody trying to study physics, but he has, he has learned how to smoke marijuana? He will never learn physics. Because there's something he loves more than physics that is controlling the life. That's how sin is. It's like a drug. If you open yourself to it, it it's more addictive than cigarette. You will need the hand of God to break the yoke. In order for him to break the yoke, he will take you through a circumstance. <laughs> and when you come out, you will become a Puritan. I don't need to tell you what he took me through. When you come out and the suggestion comes for you to lie, you will remember how he took you from the sheep coat and you will come down. I've seen a pastor many years ago. He came one night and said his fiancée was pregnant. He said if people know that this lady is pregnant, the body of Christ will be in crisis. The body of Christ is okay. It's you that have a problem. So that was his explanation for abortion. And we kept the secret. We, we knew, but we kept quiet. Many years later. It means he invaded chastisement. Because any chastening God wants to give to you, you have the opportunity to invade it. He will give you the opportunity. There are two things the Bible instructed. Oh my God, you are not with. Can you go back to Hebrews chapter 12 quick, quickly? Next verse. He said, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as children. My son, number one, despise not the chastening of the Lord. That means if God has dealt with you, whenever Satan is bringing that temptation again, remember the dealing, it will deliver you. Second thing he asks you, he said, despise not the chastening of the Lord and do not faint when you are rebuked by him. God will rebuke you, but you know why he's doing it. Not because he's wicked, but there is something that needs to be purged so I will not faint. I know it's an act of love and I've seen his hand behind it. This brother paid for abortion. I kept he dodged the chastisement because if it had become open and the parents of the girl knew about it everybody knows about it it will administer 
a dealing. Are you with me? That will cure him from that tendency in his future ministry. And when eventually he becomes restored, the devil cannot play that card with him anymore because of the chastisement. But he escaped. And I've checked his ministry till today. I've checked it. Anytime ministry becomes hard, that you need to believe God, you can no longer predict when the next supplies will come. He will use a means of the flesh to survive. If, if the new reigning preacher is prophet Ezekiel, he's going to be in your church. And the, the way he will wiggle, you are likely to make him someone that is prominent. He will wiggle. Then when he seems that, okay, you are not reigning the way he thought again, he will disappear. Then the next guy reigning is in Taraba. He will appear there. Before you know it, after three weeks, he will be holding mic. He will wiggle. Do you know that that guy is not serving God? Oh, you are not aware. That thing is not ministry. When you do it till old age, you will know that ah, because you were determined to escape every opportunity for chasing. He said, among all the sons that are bona fide, this thing is a common matter. But if you are without it, it means God cannot endorse you. You are a pastor. Are you with me? Are you with me? At the end of the day, the sons that have chastening from God, you will know. They are authentic. They are strong. They are original. And God backs them up. What you see some people is gimmicks. It's gimmicks. And I've watched for years, for more than 20 years, I've seen gimmicks in that brother's life till today. If he comes here now, he must get your phone numbers. It's about contacts. It's about navigation. But a man walking with Jesus doesn't mind to stay in the wilderness until Jesus begins to. If you come out before your time, if you appear before your time, demons will ensure that you disappear. You will do something wrong that will make you disappear. You are not that wise. And the time you will make that mistake, it will be a time where you needed not to make the mistake. But because you didn't go through the process, you don't know what is valuable in your calling. He say, if you do not have these disciplines, you are not approved. Do you know how long we stayed in the wilderness? They are preaching straight for 15 years, straight. The congregation you are preaching to, he doing those. Sometimes 30, sometimes 12. Sometimes 25, sometimes. And we preach messages to the whole world. And I didn't know that the whole world heard it. It is only a man that is undergoing perpetual process with God that can truly prophesy. Because prophecy is an act of faith. I didn't know the whole world heard it. My city did not hear it, but the whole world heard it. Then when people began to come from nations of the world, my, the people in my city were ashamed. They said, Kai would have joined oh, 14 years ago, but we did not look like success. Please don't look like success. Don't ever look like it. When we were coming to preach for, for Danjuma, we put our vehicles in, what they call that, in ferry. So we move on ferry, we move on boat, we move on bicycle, we move just to get to the mission field. You, you say you're a big man. Where did they get you from? You have not gone through the process. So you can't adapt. You can't fly with plane and drop somewhere and take bicycle and complete the, the trip. Because you have not been groomed. So where the plane ends, your journey ends there. And that's why you have pot belly. Pot belly. Hallelujah. So we have raised a crop of counterfeit believers as the people to contend with the darkness of our age. People that are in love with immorality, with pornography, sexual vices. People that are secretly still going back to smoke and service their cigarette. Dogs have gone back to the vomit. Their weaknesses have become strongholds. Many others have evaded 
dealings from God and they have not grown spiritually. They still take advantage of manipulations in the flesh to get by. But God wants to begin afresh with Nigeria and with the church. Yes, people that know the hand of their God when he administers discipline and justice so that they can come out strong, stronger than the darkness of the time. I tell you the truth, our deliverance is near. It is time to take your journey. Give the Holy Ghost two hours in the night, at least. Tell him why I'm coming here is because I want to know you. Because if I know you, I'm blessed. It's a privilege to be numbered in you. I'm coming so that I can know you. I'm coming so that I can understand the texture of your voice. I'm coming not because of anything I will gain immediately. But the capacity that my intimacy with you will build because of the days to come. Last year was the year that I came out of the wilderness. Last year. 25 years of training on the ground. It's last year. And when I came out last year, many people thought we were late. You cannot be late. You can't be late. The message I preached that went around the world, there were 30 people in the congregation I was preaching to. But I preached to the world. I got used to the fact that whether they are 30 doesn't change your voice. I'd known the God of the pulpit and I was proclaiming his counsel without looking at the congregation. Spent 11 days in, 12 days in Kenya. On the ninth day, we were giving direction to the country. The, um, the leaders of the country. On the ninth day. You know, when you come out at the right time, nine days can it means much. Direction. This man, this is the man that will rule this country. And this is the work God has called him to do. He spread like wildfire. Nine days. Then you will now know that all those 25 years were not wasted. It's nine days standing on 25 years of foundation. It, it goes forth with strength and God backs it up. Tonight, in our prayer commitment, what we are telling Jesus is, I don't want the shortcut. I want to be a true product of the Holy Ghost. A true product of the Holy Ghost. Someone that is fully, fully equipped by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We went to Ghana. When we got to Ghana, they say, Pastor, there are two places you should not visit. First is called the Volta region. The home of sorcerers. Hallelujah. And in the Volta, there is a location called Nogopo. That's where politicians used to do charm to rule. It's the seat of the God of Iron and the God of Thunder. If you pay the sorcerers there, they can release thunder and it will strike you in your room. Anybody that dies by no Gopo is black. The dead body is black. They say, don't visit them. The second place you should not visit is the northern region. That's the home of the wizards. And they have practiced wizardry for generations. Even Ghanaian preachers don't go there. So when we prayed, he said the first place we should go to is Volta. And then the second is the northern region. So we, we prepared ourselves. And I tell you, I prepared all my weapons. <laughs> oh, Ayakumi. When the power of God hears somebody, then he begins to speak. Under the inspiration of demons. When they interpret it, they say, they are asking where you came from. And that now that you have come, you will not go back alive. That's the utterance. You could see the hatred. But you know what? The fact that Satan hated us didn't make him capable of stopping us. In fact, when we finished in the northern region, the, the, our host that brought us in, that welcomed us, one week after we left, they struck him. He called me and said, I'm in the hospital. I knew the wizards have 
And I say, as the Lord liveth. He couldn't urinate again. They stopped his, his urine. As the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, the next three hours, the man is well. Now he sent me a text yesterday night. Say, you are coming by a match. You have to, you have to come back. We have seen some. <laughs> so much happens if Jesus has as much as one man. Satan that is boasting will come down. Our prayer is simple. It's a prayer of revival. We are saying, Holy Ghost, we don't want to cut corners. This, my life, is your project. Don't, I don't need a shortcut. Take me through the highway of the discipline of the Spirit so that I can emerge a man of God. A tough man, a thick man, a product of heaven. There is nothing we are afraid of now. The Holy Ghost will guide my feet. The Holy Ghost will guide my heart. I will not be without discipline. He will take me through circumstances, through situations, and he will purge my weakness out of me. And his life and strength will replace that element of the flesh that makes me susceptible to the temptations coming from the kingdom of darkness. Can you say, Holy Ghost, I want to go through the way you have assigned for me. Don't make a shortcut. I don't want to be counterfeit. Too many counterfeit pastors. Too many counterfeit brethren. Where are they strong? What about the saviors that God said will come from Mount Zion? If nothing happens, Christianity will experience setback in the next 25 years. If God does not go far with you, if God does not go far with me, Christianity will suffer a terrible fate in 25 years' time. Can you ask him? Can you ask him? As you present before him those weaknesses that are choking your advancement with God. Because the fire of the Lord will burn tonight. He will burn off all the chaff with unquenchable fire. My compadre Bonsali, para me cuscete pentacula matan. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.